Um, I think early on, um, when I was um, typically doing larger scale retrospectives rather than, you know, after two weeks or three weeks of, of work, um, I think the biggest failing was not really pushing back on management's idea that, oh, if we have this retrospective, we'll never have a late project again. You know, so, so that, you know, that was, you know, a lot of years ago. And I would um, handle a situation like that differently now. Because one retrospective, no matter how well run, isn't going to address a pattern of organizational problems that have built up over years and that are tightly entangled. You know, so, but yeah, that's something that if I had to do it over again, I would do differently. I would, I would not let that expectation stand. Uh, my biggest retrospective failure is uh, when I had been Scrum Master for some time, I could see that my team was starting to to dip in energy in retrospectives because we had been doing the same uh, the same format again and again. Then I thought, okay, let's try out something new. And then we tried out something new. And then the retrospective afterwards, we tried out something new. And we continued to try out something new. So people got completely confused on what did what to expect, how to prepare for the meeting and stuff like that. And it was a really valuable lesson for me to just keep it simple and don't change the format for the sake of changing the format. Um, and that is something I try to remember. The lack of psychological safety among team members was my biggest failure. So I want to talk about a team I coach. I was a scrum master for the team. So we used to do retrospectives every sprint, work on the action items, and demos were happening, and everything looked fine. After three months, the client reported potential failures and issues at the customer end. Now, this item was obviously brought to the retrospective for discussion. And at that time, to my surprise, instead of talking about the client's feedback and reasoning it out, the team started finger pointing at each other. They were giving feedback to each other and they started blaming each other. And they were talking about so many issues. So, all the finger pointing and issues, though they were fine, and real, but none of them spoke about these in the earlier retrospectives. So it was so evident that there was no psychological safety among the team members and it led to the actual problems not being discovered. So it was a very good lesson for me to learn. Though superficially everything appears normal, we have to check for psychological safety since if that is not there, team will not open up and speak. So maybe try to do some Anonymous surveys, go talk to people, spend some time, establish trust so that they feel safe to talk.